There are certain stocks we get asked about all the time, especially speculative biotech names. When you really nail one of these, wow, the gains can be enormous, which is why cars so often get excited about them. Take Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. This is a development stage gene therapy company. Arrowhead is trying to treat rare genetic disorders by effectively silencing, and that's the key term, silencing the genes that cause them, using what's known as RNA interference technology. Over the past two years, this stock has rallied from just under four bucks to just over $36. That's an 800% gain. No wonder we're always getting called about it. I gave my blessing to speculate on this one as part of my homework piece a little over a month ago. Since then, it's up another 20%. I like that Arrowhead has a bunch of positive catalysts coming, including a big R&D day in New York City, right here, that takes place tomorrow. And before they talk to the professionals, they're visiting us to share their story with you, the home gamers. So let's check in with Christopher Anzalone. He's the president and CEO of Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. Learn more about his company and its prospects. Mr. Anzalone, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Hey, Jim, Have a seat. Good, good to see you. Well, our viewers are the smartest on TV because they see that you have a lot of prospects and, more important, that you have great partners, big, deep-pocketed partners that can do terrific things, including pay you uh, some giant milestone fees. Can you walk through what those are and what, why they're excited about silencing genes and maybe some new things that are going to happen that you'll reveal tomorrow? Sure. Thanks, Jim. So, uh, look, we have a partnership with J&J um, for our hepatitis B drug, as well as three new targets they will bring to us that we will uh, build new drugs around. We also have a partnership with Amgen for a cardiovascular drug that we developed, and they are developing that in the clinic, and they will commercialize that. Uh, I think that, that what they saw was a really powerful technology that, as you say, can silence genes that cause disease. Um, and it, it, it is a hyper-specific process whereby we can, we can silence a single gene, uh, and it is now a validated technology, so we know it works. We know that we can do it in a well-tolerated manner. Uh, and to the extent that we choose the right genes, uh, we could have a, a, a substantial effect on people's lives. Now, uh, J&J, your deal there is humongous. What's well, $250 million to begin with, but three, what, more than $3 billion in milestone payments over time? How does that work so our viewers know what to see? Sure. So, so the deal is this. Is, is this. Um, it is for our hepatitis B drug that they have now moved into a phase two study. Uh, and it is also for three new targets they will bring to us. And we, we view that as found value. Uh, these are targets. These are gene targets they will bring to us, and, we'll, and we will develop uh, drugs around them. They don't come from our pipeline. And so as, as we push those, or as they push those drugs through the clinic and into commercialization, they will pay us milestone payments. And then after commercialization, they will pay us royalties. How about the Amgen affiliation? Uh, <clears throat> very similar. Um, Okay. Um, that's for, for a drug against cardiovascular disease. Again, this is a drug that we developed, uh, and they came in and, and, and saw that it, it, should, it should fit well with their portfolio, uh, and they will uh, bring it to the clinic and then commercialize it. Okay, so silencing a gene. Can you silence more than one gene? So that's an interesting question. Uh, so, so the short answer until, until today really was, was not really. Um, uh, RNA interference, uh, as you say, is a, is a method of silencing a gene, um, and it can be used now therapeutically to treat diseases. Uh, we viewed two big possibilities with the, with the technology that we wanted to, to, uh, to advance. One was bringing RNA interference outside the liver. The, the field has gotten pretty good at silencing genes within the liver. And you know what? There are a lot of important medicines that can be developed uh, um, by silencing liver-derived or liver-expressed genes. But also, to your point, uh, we viewed a big possibility uh, of, of silencing more than one gene. And tomorrow we'll talk about that a bit, but we have advanced that. And so now we can do two things that I think are quite important. A, we can bring RNAi interference to new organ systems. By the end of this year, we'll have our first drug um, uh, in the clinic um, that will be uh, targeting solid tumors. The middle of next year will be in the lungs for cystic fibrosis. The end of the year will be in, in muscle cells. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit, and also we'll talk about the ability now to silence more than one gene. And that opens up a whole host of new diseases, I think. Now, I, I know from, uh, from Vertex, cystic fibrosis is really hard and horrible disease. Now, how do you know that it might work? I mean, how do you pick these things? Because these are complex diseases, and that's a disease that has been so difficult to beat. Yeah, you know, it's a great question. It's a broader question, and I'll tell you why. Um, uh, you know, biopharma is full of upside. You know, we all, we all can, can look at diseases that, that, are, that, are, that are horrible, and there's a lot of value to be created if you can solve those diseases. But you know what you really got to be focused on is risk mitigation, because we bathe in risk. And to the extent that you can mitigate that risk, uh, you can, you can uh, 
uh, you know, really build a more stable company. And what we do is we focus really only on validated targets. And what I mean by that is these are, these are our proteins, these are gene targets that we know if you turn that off, a good thing will happen. Right, and so we know that for cystic fibrosis, for the gene we're going after, it, it is it is uh, it's called epithelial sodium channel. We know that if, that if that is turned off or turned down in cystic fibrosis patients, good things will happen. And so so when we look at our at our at our at our at our risk profile, we've got two risks or two two primary risks. One uh, one is the target risk, and we right. can we can really walk away from that by focusing only on validated targets. The second is of course technology risk. Can you turn something off? And I think we've shown now in what, over 110 people that we can do that. Uh, and so we're excited about the technology. We're excited about where we can take it next. 110 people, really? So you've got, I mean, this isn't mice. These are people. It's not mice. We, we've been at 110 people, 160 some doses. Uh, we haven't seen any uh, called, uh, so-called SAEs right. or serious adverse events. Um, uh, and we've been able to consistently turn down these target genes. It's really exciting time. Well, that's sensational. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Can't wait to hear, uh, get the big deck tomorrow, I'm sure, right? That we won't be able to see because you've got your big analyst day. That's Chris Franzaloni, president and CEO of Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. Thank you to our viewers for bringing this to our attention. Their money's back after the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.